Innsbruck in Austria, the venue for the first race weekend of the BMW IBSF bobsleigh and skeleton World Cup season, and indeed for the second as we stay here next week as well. But before that, we get to the blue ribbon event of the sport, the four-man bobsleigh. 26 sleds going into our first of two heats. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action with you and John. When this track was built in 76, sleds were neither as big nor as fast as they are now. It's a tough task to get down clean. Well, it was tough then, but the sport now is probably four or five seconds faster than the Olympic Games times 76. We should check that out, Martin, and I have a little book I can go check the times, but <laughs> just the athletes have really, and the sleds, I've really got a lot faster, but the track, what a training grounds for teams and what a place to learn. And then you come here and yes, it's probably the easiest track on the planet. There's the Kreisel, the signature part of the course, but it's easy to get down. It's just very hard to get down fast consistently. Pivotal part of the track there, curve nine, this long straightaway into 10. This is where the speed comes up into this three-corner combination, the labyrinth, that every track must have one. And you're gonna see the back ends of four mans airborne in there in that third labyrinth into the finish. Friedrich, 50.42. We haven't really seen any track records in any of the previous five disciplines, Martin. The track's been in excellent shape. The track crew has done a fantastic job. And I don't think we're gonna see records here in four man, but uh, you know, I don't know how low they can go on the track, Martin, how much lower well, can they go? The man there in the hood, he's the one who's going to be the person that will answer that question. I think you're right, though, maybe not today. It's just too mild. The ice is in great shape, but it might need a few more degrees dropping out of the air temperature. You get to sub-zero, and that's when you start to get the really hard, fast ice here, as we did have uh, back in 2019. Actually, we saw two-man records broken last year as well, or very nearly broken, tied at least, but uh, it was a lot colder in January than it is now. Well, as I said, we've got 26 sleds going into the heat. So what's that, 112 athletes plus spares in the changing rooms. It's a very, very busy place when the four-man race is in town. And among them, we have all of the expected front runners including Francesco Friedrich, the man who was in that hood. He won every race in the four-man last year, including the World Championship. He won 11 of 12 World Cup races and the World Championship in two-man as well. If it hadn't been for Johannes Lochner being quick here in the first heat of the two-man race one, then Friedrich would probably have had a clean sweep of every bobsleigh race he started. Well, he can start again looking for that clean sweep of the entire season because he's won the two-man already this weekend and the odds are pretty decent that he's going to do well in four-man as well. First race of the BMW IBSF four-man bobsleigh World Cup season at Innsbruck in Austria. Maxim Anginov of Russia starts a World Cup for the first time in two years and he is the first man off the mountain. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action. He was the first man off in the second heat of two men yesterday, Martin, because he was in 20th place. Today he's got the reversal of fortune. And he's the first guy down with the fresh ice. Training times, he did pretty good in training, but of course took a split training. Idea how good that is. It's 493 is the start record. He posted 507. We could see some high fours. But that start record, record is, is one of the longest standing. It goes back to December or January 2013. So that's a long time. Our good friend Oscars Mel Vardis and his uh, Batman teammate Dreeskins. They've just retired. They were legends in our sport. Hope they're watching and they provided us some thrills. Yeah, Oscar Lombardis raced his final World Cup race here in January and then went on to the World Championships. But uh, Anginov didn't do a World Cup race at all last year. The only time we saw him was in the World Championships, John. So coming back from a degree of injury and a slump in his form. Well, he's 3,500s from the start or from the track record. I am. I think we got a chance. 
for the record, you know? But I, this is probably a top seven or an eight. You know, if I could put money down on it, I, I would take it. But uh, look at the cohesion of a four-man start. We're going to have a lot of fun doing commentary on those pictures. Such beautiful stuff we're getting. Look at this. Look at that 13. Here's the front part of it. The, right the last labyrinth. Look at the way the sled wants to rock. He hit there too, Martin. Yep, he wow. sure did. These things send the ice flying. Next up for the Netherlands, Ivo de Brown, with Jelen Francic joining brother Janko, and a brand new man in the team, Stefan Hostenfeld. So Ivo is in. This is their first race load as a four-man crew. So Janko Francic was in the two-man sled yesterday, and two new men at two and four. 1400 back, that's relative to the deficient start time. Here we go. It's... How many starts does he have in four man, Martin? He's been around a right. long time. He has been around a long time, but again, like with the two man, hasn't done all of the races, all of the seasons, but it's in the high 40s, I think. Oh, by the way, from yesterday, Apologies to Esme Campus, Elena Jurg, and Ilse Bruders for not remembering your World Cup top yes, 10 finishes and good Olympic runs. 50.86, that's a decent first that's heat great. from Ivo de Brown. Ooh. Stop, stop, stop. Rookie first... Brakeman. Well, it's a little yeah. harder with these, a little bit more energy in these four man sleds. Yeah, and that's why it's so important to break immediately after the line. Hey, but good again, run for yeah. him to beat up on Andrianov by a hundredth of a second. Such a long distance and space between these two sides. Look at the foreman. The bunk touched the uh, outlet. He's got a little skid going. Look at the runners. You're going to see a lot of runner checks like that in that straightaway. And look at that skid. Martin, that was a major mistake. Yeah. So next up, Xiao Yi Jun of China. Ding Song two, Wu Chai two at three, and Chen Chan Hong at four. And as with all their other colleagues, none of these athletes competed outside of China in the last 12 months. So their last race internationally was the World Championships in Altenburg 2020. And that means that the Chinese teams have gone through an awful lot of training dry land training, ice training, but also a lot of changes going on as we build up to Beijing in February. 5.18 getaway. Velocity, but didn't see that, but you know, there's still learning. Do I say the Chinese have a chance to win a medal in two-man or four-man? When I saw the two-man race, no. What I'm seeing in the start, start time here in the four-man, not. But uh, could, could get into the top ten. Oh, late. Very late. See how late wow. he is here. That was very late in the first part of the lab right there. Yeah. That was a real wake-up call. After that, it was a big scramble to get them down safely. Oh, and again. Brakeman far too late on the brakes. Man, oh, just look at I mean, he was almost standing up there. He was hauling so hard on those handles. Don't think These that's things... uh, like a weightlifting Jump. exercise. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, he had to haul it down off there. What do you call Robin Hood? Yeah. yeah. He had to Robin Hood that four. When you start Robin Hood and four mans at 75 plus miles an hour, like right here, watch what happens on the outlet here. Boy, you don't yeah. see too many sleds doing that. That danger zone. And there's half a ton of meat in there rocking it around as well. Don't think these things are light in any way. Brad Hall, Taylor Lawrence, Nick Gleason, and Greg Cackett. Brad and Brad had a fantastic two-man race yesterday. Let's see what they've got in the four. Five flat start. That's superior to anybody else by a lot. You know, he's got 700th and Andrianov, the best start. 
So all things being equal, 3,500, that tells you how much of an advantage the start is here. And John, he should seven, he 700, sorry, off that track start record as well. That might get equal today. Talent. We're going to lose some time back now. But oh, good exit, though. Lead, but there's the speed trap ranking we'd love to have if they could figure that out for us. 2,500, losing time back. He's going to have 18 or 1,900's lead. Good run for Brad Hall. 20. Yeah. Lost some time down below. Matias Burma you know, there. Doesn't have as much experience with the four-man, with the big sled, that as he has with the little sports car. Well, I didn't Good start the first two races of the season that last year, but he finished in eighth place here in Innsbruck. He'll be looking for more than that. Let's see if he can get out of here. Look at the yeah, little runner change. This is down in the, the labyrinth. Labertini airborne runners. We're going to see a lot of them. Watch the runner. Look at that. You know how much... That is amazing to see the upper left or the back left runner up. One of the many decathletes in the field right there, Martin. Yep. So, Johannes Lochner, now he will give us an indication of where Brad Hall was. Bronze medalist on this track in the last couple of seasons. Missed out on a podium last year, though. Silver medalist in 2019 and 2020. And a winner here in the European Championships three seasons ago. So 5.02 gives us an indication of how quick Brad Hall and the crew are starting. Yeah, if I'm the Great Britain, I'm very encouraged by that four-man start from Brad Hall. Yep. He matched up new man, here, but I... New man in with uh, Johannes, Eric Brookert at three joins the crew. First start for him in the World Cup. Yeah, he's got two new guys on the team from his from his four-man team at the Worlds last year. Dead heat, he's probably going to get him by a couple hundreds on the bottom. He as expected. Good speed. 126, there. 1, 127. Great speed from the FES. Is that an FES sled? OK, um, let's just double check. It is an FES four-man. 50.62, so four hundreds between the top two. Almost a full kilometer in speed difference for yeah. Johannes, the man from Birch's Garden. Good start getting get down. Cohesion, choreography on ice. The first time I've said that this year. Interesting Beautiful. look to the nose of the sled. Look at the bunks, John. Normally they're level. Those are in a sort of V shape where the outside edge of the bunk is higher than inside. That's a clear aerodynamic piece of work there. New to the FES sled. Johannes Lochner is our leader. Five sleds gone. Next up, Benny Meyer of Austria. Never out of the top three last season in four-man. Took a silver medal here. One of three in the World Cup. And then he went on to take silver in the World Championships as well. In a huge vein of form last year in two and four-man but especially in the big machines. Got one new guy this year, Sasha uh, Stepan. Sasha Stepan was, guy. yeah, he was yeah. on the crew last year as well. So he's one of the newer men in the in the push unit. Yeah, he wasn't in the four-man world championship crew, though. Yeah. Look at this, though. He's already taken the 300s deficient start, and he's turned it into the green numbers. Ooh, Ooh. tap there, though. That's, that's going to cost him. Lost it back. Best speed exiting the Chrysler was Johannes Lochner, just a whisker slower. Great line uh, there. See if he gets rewarded with the line. That's a good high line, and that worked well for him. Is he going to close on Lochner? 400 like first to second, John. Is he going to be third? He eight. is third. No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So Brad Hall is second, Benny Meyer is third, Hansi Lochner is our leader. Look at the great, what is that picture yeah. on the side? That's somebody's... Well, that's the sponsor's logos, isn't it? Uh, yeah. A chocolate bar. Boy. No runner change there, look at that. You talk about smooth, 
little yeah. bit in the transition. We saw some spray, but he's got the foreman pointed in the right direction. Must have made that little mistake up top, I think, cost him, Martin. Yes. Look at there's that. That's Everybody it. focuses on the labyrinth, but it's the quiet few corners at the start of the run that are so often the undoing of, of your speed. One more. So Liz Meyer and uh, his son Hendricks will be watching. Hendricks less so, I guess. Mikel Vogt with Silvieri, Silvio Weber and Sandro Michel behind him, the big figure at the back. Two new guys to pair off his team right here. Well, both have pushed with him before, but uh, they're moving athletes around. And we'll see this in a lot of countries, Ooh. maybe moving them even between driver teams to try and figure out what the best combinations are for everybody. Listen to the sounds of these big sleds. Third best speed, only two tenths of a K down on leader Hansi Lochner, but 2400s back. Yeah, he's starting fifth. He might finish fifth. Well, Mikhail only did two World Cup races in four man last year 14th in Winterberg, 7th at home in San Moritz, and then 13th in the Six. World Championships. He's really got the hang of the two man, but the four man is just taking its time to really gel with him. Yeah, but he didn't compete in four-man in Yanqing. Only Seaman Friedel did. But, uh, you know, fifth best start, sixth best downtime. He's, you know, only a couple high 500s from Andrianov. 600s from Ivo De Bruyn. Right now, the biggest surprise on the top five is Ivo De Bruyn. Look at the back yep. runner. That's a signature. It's going to happen every sled. Then look at the way it digs into the ice. The spray comes up. Top of the ice, Oscars Kibermanis of Latvia with Dove Springs, Matis Mignis, and Chris Lindenblatt. Lindenblatt joined this team last season for the first time in World Cup. Should break so five seconds. Oh, yeah. Should break five you seconds. Would hope. Uh, didn't see much of the Latvians last year. They didn't leave Latvia. The country was in lockdown till Christmas. So he only did a couple of races. Wow. This was 21st. Missed the cut, John, in this race in January. How do you figure that? I mean, he, he, well, this he is, wasn't fast enough. Is, is how you figure it. Well, but, with, yeah. the start time, with the start time he gets, He's got the second, third best start times at the World Championship. Now he's, you know, he's got the fourth best time right here. So and that'll get beat by two or three more sleds. So of course you don't want to peak now. You want to peak in February. Yeah, you don't want to be dragging your sorry backside around Europe, not hitting it out of the park though. I mean, there's the confidence peak. factor as well. February's 17th Ooh. when you want to peak. Fourth yeah, best start. Fourth best flat and low there through the final corner. It shortens the distance to the line, but it robs the sled of speed. Let me say Fourth again, place. Evo, Evo De Bruyne was 900s behind at the start and only 200s behind him at the finish. Gabriel Mattis didn't do well yesterday in the two-man, so no, maybe didn't. they're just, you know, quietly preparing themselves for that big day on February 16th and 17th. But this is a guy with, who can achieve the big starts. We know he can drive himself onto the podium. Yeah, silver medalist here two seasons ago. That is his only medal on this track. Mel Bardis had a slew of wins, four in a row, including the 2016 Worlds. Now then, what about Hunter Church of the USA? Josh Williamson, Hakeem Abdul Sabur, Charles Volker at the back. The Brakeman is a new name on this sled, so making his first start in World Cup. Hunter's got a coming off a serious foot injury, dropped a weight on his foot in late September, had surgery. He's only had about four or four man trips. Fuck. Fuck it, man. Oh. 
before he got here. It. People might find it strange that there are more injuries to these athletes in the gym than on the track, but think how little time they spend at a track compared to how much time they spend in a gym. No it's clocks there, but a 504 start. Yeah. That's a great start. You know, the United States has got a brand new indoor push facility, Martin. When you see it, like all the Europeans, everybody comes over here, you won't believe the state-of-the-art push facility they built. And I think what we saw with Cody Basker yesterday, the United States has used it to their advantage. Yeah, really looking forward to getting back to racing in North America as soon as we can. It's not happening this season again, unfortunately, but then so much is not happening in the last couple of years. We're lucky to have racing at all. Hunter Church, only 1,200 back, John. This is a very good run. Got four. Really yep. good from Hunter back. Church. We'll take Excellent. that. Got four. Of course, he medaled on this track. He medaled on this track a few years ago in the World Cup. Ooh, yep. They make a mistake. He, he absolutely did. That was two seasons ago. Took a bronze medal. And Jimmy Reed on the sled that day, who had been in Stephen Holcomb's crew the last time Holkey took a World Cup medal as well. Cut some ice. There's the runner tips. He's had some issues here. Still got a skid going on that straightaway, but... Uh, We gotta pick it up, boys. Yeah. So next up is our world and Olympic champion, Francesco Frigic. Torsten Margis, Candy Bauer, Alexander Schiller. Regular crew behind him. Alex Rödinger has joined the lineup as well for this Olympic season. After the retirement of Nico Walter a couple of years ago, 498 is the start. That's a really look at good getaway. Well, but not the best velocity. So the sweat wavered a little bit as they got in and got out of the start line. And he's only 300. He had a 400 better start. He's only 300 better there, Martin. That's surprising. Only 100 there. To one. They, they had a little issue there, I yeah. think, getting in the sled. But he's getting out. Now he's back on line. Georgia Francesco, I always tell you about the early corners that make the foundation for your run. Now he's starting to pull away a little. Yeah. But he's at least hands within, are at doing least it he, again. At least he's within breathing distance of the field. Yes. Yesterday, <laughs> 34 hundreds ahead of everybody at the end of the first team. Yeah. Today, he's sort of letting them all play a little bit with them in the second run. And the, you know, yesterday was, he was in the other planet status. But he's the well, leader look, by Muhammad only Ali eight. didn't win every fight, and Francesco Frugic doesn't win every heat either, but... He doesn't yeah, lose was, many. Doesn't lose many, does he? No, he really does not. Well, that was a perfect exit. That gave him his difference on the bottom. That curve 10 where you see him going right there, that's where he lost the world championships here in 2015 with that mistake in the final run that let... The Latvians win their first ever world championships, Oscars Melbardis. Yeah, that'll be the last time he loses a big race, I guarantee. Yeah. So Francesco Friedrich leads 10 sleds down and 16 to go. Next up, Yun Jong Won of Korea, Kim Jong Young, Kim Jin Soo, and Yung Hyun Wo, all familiar names, though because of COVID, we didn't get to see very much of them racing last year. Again, the Koreans, like the Latvians, only appeared in Europe after Christmas when travel restrictions were released a little. Yeah, the start's just not there. He's got a new guy on the back of the sled, Young. He wasn't on the World Championship team last year. Yeah, I think Yun Wo Xiao was on the back of the four-man yeah. as well. Yeah. But they ran him yesterday in the two-man with one, and so he'll be having a day off. Yeah, he had very competitive starts. Ooh, big waiver there on the entrance to Kreisel will really cost him. And there will be somebody that doesn't make the second run. I don't think he's in danger of that, Martin. Well, but... there'll be half a dozen sleds that don't make the second run, but yeah, he should be ahead of the Chinese sleds of Xiao right now. Yeah, it's going to be 70 hundreds back, 69. Yeah. 10th out of 11 sleds. Yes, the coach takes a long look at the screen and stalks off. 
And if he was the coach who was around with the team in 2018 when they won that legendary silver medal on their home track, the crowd loud, it sounded like a football stadium. That was a, that's a memory for me for a long time, Martin. I really, yeah. that was some historic moment. You were there, a couple boosts down from me. And All those concrete was, bleachers rocking away. Yeah, yeah it was uh, very, you know, I've done 10 Olympics and I'll be doing my 11th, but that moment stands out as, wow, what a moment for yeah. the sport. Yeah, I wonder if we're going to be able to see that kind of capacity crowd in Beijing. I think it's probably highly unlikely. Nevertheless, there'll be a lot of support for the home team. Justin Cripps knows what that feels like after the games in Whistler with Ryan Summer, Cam Stones and Ben Coatwell behind him again. Super experienced and rehearsed crew. And look at that, 5.05, that's a good getaway as well. Yeah, but they had better starts than that last year at the World Championship. No, they didn't. They had six best starts. That was pretty much the same, but... You know, he's starting late in the heat, he's 10 hundreds back. He's going to have all he can do here to get in the top 10, or top five, yeah. excuse me. Ooh, that's a mistake. Second best yeah. velocity, though. Sled is pretty wayward. He's had the, the front end breaking loose a couple of times in the run already. Yang Ching, he and was again. fifth. Ooh, that's not good. Can't get the raking of the speed there. This is Three eight tenths best. back. Yeah, this is not good. He's nearly two kilometers an hour down in terms of top speed and at the line, 10th wow, place. A, as much as we talk that's about Ivo De, De Bruyne is a surprise in seventh, and Justin Crypt is a surprise in 10th. Listen. Well, we saw all the errors. We know why he isn't in the top two. There's one. Right there. That's up top. Yep. That's really a no-no there to touch the wall there. Then he still that mistake is still causing him problems here. Yep. Look, the front bump. He was so on he late, made his off late, off four to five. And again, look at the runners here. Look at that. That's a big steerage right there, and the back end yep. comes down, causes a lot of energy into the ground and spray and skid and. Yeah. Yeah, we know. Well, we, we... there was a mistake in pretty much every turn there from Justin Cripps. Next up for the Czech Republic, Dominic Dvořák with Jan Sindelar, Jakub Nosek, and the man who was behind him in the two-man yesterday, Dominic Zaleski. Should now probably again, get about a 506, 507. Yeah. 508, maybe. 508 yeah. on the money. Well, looking at their start times that they had in Yang Ching, you already finished 17th, but he had the fifth best start in the second run. So, I mean, they can do it. But, you know, starting late, now there's no mistakes allowed. Had a little bit of an off-form season in the four-man last year. Eighth in the first race, but by the end of the season where we got here, only 17th place in Innsbruck and only 16th in the World Championships. Not at all where we'd expected him to be. No, you're right there. Oh, And again, ah. I think the ice is still very different from training. That looked well, the, the same as Justin Cripps, as though the ice was a lot faster and they were getting a lot less traction from the runners out of it. Martin, yesterday in the first heat, I saw the ice fall away after about eight, seven, eight, ten sleds. Good example, Chris Spring went late yesterday in the two-man. But in the second heat, he went early because of his uh, 15th or 16th place. And he moved up six, seven spots. Look at Whoa. that energy going the wrong direction. Yeah. Look at that. Man, oh, oh, man. man. To take a 1,390-pound piece of equipment and men on it, and look at those pictures. That's a lot of energy. And just look at the way it's, it's fighting him at the front and the back. Yeah, the I mean, back. that's we were lucky to get that down. He's not wrong. He and Justin Cripps had no control of either end of the sled, and you don't see that. 
Russia's Rostislav Kajtukovic now, then. He is the coming man. Mikhail Mordashov, Ilya Malik. Big Ilya at three. Oh, he's and been Pavel around. Pavel Travkin. Yeah, Malik is so big, he's normally on the back handle. Pavel Travkin, a new name to me. He's at four. Yeah, he wasn't in the World Championship team last year. Only a 505 to start, Martin. I thought they would do better than that. He was fifth at the Yangqing test, and he had better start. Let's see, he had the, the best start he had in the China test event. So for him to post that time. Well, again, all the start back. areas are different. Some are shorter, some are longer, some are steeper, some are flatter. The one in La Plan, they always say, is like running a marathon, not a short sprint. So maybe it just suits his team better. Yeah. Fighting it. All right, ninth place, 50.91. If Francesco Friedrich hadn't gone four sleds ago, seven tenths quicker, you'd be saying, OK, or in fact, yeah, seven tenths, you'd be saying, OK, the track is going away, but every sled that comes down, it will have a deteriorating effect on the ice. And it is a World Cup debut for the brakeman, Dominic Zaleski, so welcome to him. I beg your pardon, uh, Pavel Travkin, the uh, brakeman on the back of Guy Chukovic's sled. Martin, the finish times in Yang Ching are nine seconds more than these times. Wow. Well, that's, that's almost Samaritz territory, isn't it? 1,600 meter track, nine seconds more. Yeah. Roman Heinrich, Leon and Lefebvre, Thomas Del Mest at three, in for Dorian Oteville, and Jeremy Leporal at four for France. Well, with that type of start, you need to put it on autopilot and make no mistakes. Not easy to do, I mean, again, easy track, very safe track, or tap there. Uh, no mistakes allowed. You got to be perfect. We even saw our good friend Mr. Friedrich make a mistake up top, or he'd have yep. a 2,500 fleet, 2,000 fleet instead of the eight. Half a second back, Roman Heinrich. But the gap is growing steadily. Well, he's yep. going to be. He's going to be a guy the 15th to 20th spot, 14th, yeah. not bad. He's going to qualify, he's in the race. Yeah, Did he's ahead of Shao. Yeah, I've got together yeah. a little. Yeah, he, was, he took the 15 to a 14 on the bottom. Again, well, the man just climbing out there at three, Toma Del Mest. This is his first World Cup race. In at the last minute for Dorian Oteville. Uh... B plus, yeah. maybe an A minus there. Yeah, ten to the four finish. Two gone away. Well, I don't like the way that. Look at the way the see the snow flying up between the three and four guy. There's yeah. a hole in the sled. Well, he was on the brakes there, John, after the finish line. So yeah, that's where it's coming in. Francesco Friedrich, Johannes Lochner, Brad Hall, the top three. Great Britain's Lamin Dean with Joel Fearon, Toby Alubi, and Ben Simons on the sled. 16th of our 26 starters. And this crew has also been joined by Olympic gold medal long jumper Greg Rutherford, the 2012 London Olympic Games gold medalist, has unretired during lockdown and decided to come to bobsleigh. He is here, he will compete this season. But right now, Joel Fearon, and Toby Luby, the most experienced with Ben Simons of the Brakeman for Lamb and Dean together in this first race. Martin, there are four very large men they got in that sled, but I think that they got so many logos on them that that was the problem getting in the sled. <laughs> it's a great looking sled, livery yeah, designed nice. by, by Ian Callum, the former Jaguar Land Rover chief designer and his design crew. Well, he's got a nice so, job. and. Lamb in this spot coming up right here. Or we thought he was going to win a world championship medal here in 15, and he crashed in curve nine. And the third run, we were just thinking that was the British medal that day. 
I don't know if Lamont recovered from that time. He had the best start. He's in the he's in the hunt, you know. And, but oh, slow down. Go. Oh. Well, I can remember these guys going out of the end of the ice in Winterberg as well, down below the commentary position, going a long way up the raw concrete. And that was not a good day for the runners. Not a bad exit here, like at so many others, a little late coming Ooh, out. Cutting a lot of ice, so that back runner yeah. was cutting lots of ice. And the front ones too. And here, how much airborne? He goes into the middle. He Look at that. His was the first sled we've seen where that back left runner didn't come up in the air. Well. He's in 14th place ahead of Roman Heinrich and Xiao of China. Next up is Austria's Marcus Treichel, with Marcus Gluck, Sebastian Mitterer behind him, and Robert Exschlager, who was on the two-man sled with Marcus yesterday. Good efficient start for getting in the sled. 12th best start time, but the eighth best velocity. That is a good improvement for Team Trichel. Well, maybe this early part, as much as the final corner, is where his experience is really going to help him carry the speed. 14th spot, or 12th spot at the moment, from 11 to 12. Mm. And only 14th best speed. It's The signs are not good, are they? No, but it's... Ooh, really high on 10. And he's 13th, probably he's going to be in the field, no doubt. But you'd expect him to be in the field on his home track. Yeah. 6900s. Teammate Benny Meyer in fourth. Marcus Trichel comes across the line in, uh, nine spots further back in 13th place. So 11th best start, eighth best velocity at the first speed trap at 50 meters. But they ended up 13th at the bottom of the run. Well, runners, not bad. A little skid, though, as he goes into 10. That's why he went up so high in curve 10. In the finish, dives out. And the brakeman starts to go to work. Yep. So there is Marcus. 17 sleds out of 26 down, only three spots left in the race and nine sleds competing for them. This is Patrick Baumgartner with new boy Robert Messia, who was on the two-man sled at two, joined by Alex Panini and Jose Abu. Jose Delmas Abu on the back, another World Cup rookie making his debut today. Really good cohesion getting in the sled, not a great start. 15th best start, 12th best velocity, so we're, with what they have to work with, they did good. They also have an indoor push track, the Italians, and obviously they used it well because that was a very efficient load in the sled. Ooh, tap. Now working about an 18th time, and that tap didn't help. Yeah, so much just pressure, Martin. Just made the cut here last year, John. 21st, a uh, 20th in the field of only 22 sleds. So much pressure put on you to have a perfect run when you have a deficient start. That's what he yeah. had. And when the TV cameras show everything as well, there's Manny Mahata. 51 5 3 for Baumgartner. Uh -oh, Is that enough uh -oh, to make the race? Uh -oh. yeah. Well, there is a rookie brakeman. And again, although hurt. they have trained, John, they've probably only done a, maybe three trips in the four-man, maybe three in the two-man. So the brakeman hasn't got that much experience in getting it stopped. Martin, plus I'm seeing too much of the heads in the straightaway. Don't think yeah. that they're properly fitted in there yet. Look, you shouldn't see anybody back there. Look at the heads. We're seeing them bounce. Let's look at the white helmet. We shouldn't see that white helmet. That's aerodynamics, hundreds of well, seconds. 
Robert Messier at two was brand new in the two-man race, and Jose Abu at four, brand new in the four-man race. So, new men on that sled in those white helmets. With Mihai Centir, familiar names, Raul Dobre at two, Ciprian Darocci, who was on the two-man sled yesterday at three, and Christian Radu, the brakeman. Drivers in quick. Number two waits for the three and four to drop in. Very efficient by the Romanians. 11th best start, 7th best speed. Great they velocity. Get... They, they finished 14th here last year, John, so he's got a great opportunity here to get in the mix. He was 14th in the test event, the China event a few weeks ago. Right now he's working on a 12th spot. And 11 best speed, he could put himself close to the top 10 if he has a clean exit here, it's seen worse. Yeah. Well, this is around Justin Cripps, Dominic Dvorak, Mikkel Folk territory. So this is a pretty decent run for Mihai Tentea, 13th on the line, ahead of Marcus Treichel and behind Dominic Dvorak. Whoa! And again, the rubber matting claims another sled. Well, he's... Martin, every time he comes out here, I just look, and he's the shortest athlete in the field. Almost looks like a little jockey, but, you know, he's thick. But yeah. he's shown us day in, day out what, he's, what they have to work with. They do very well. Look at the and snow. Consistent the progress, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Consistent progress from him as well. He just gets better and better. 14th here in January, 13th in the first heat in a much bigger field of talent. Don't like the fact that he's not wearing a face mask, the brakeman there, because all that snow goes into yeah. your face. It sure does. Well, we didn't see the Japanese team at all last year, but we were impressed with their first World Cup season in 1920. Ryo Shinohara has Tatsuya Hamano, Yoshiki Kiniko, who was on the two-man sled yesterday, and the brakeman, Kenji Murakami. See that logo on the back, Kitano. That's the construction company that built the track in Nagano. That was the longtime president of the Japan Federation. See how they're lined up. 521 starts. That's not the quickest we've seen, but let's see what they can do with it. Plus, we're seeing too many shoulders back there. We're seeing too much of the team in the back of the sled. They need a little bit of time in the wind tunnel. And again, like Mihai Tintea, although Shinohara is not as short as Tintea, he's definitely dwarfed by his brakemen. A lot of steering there, but you have to. 20th spot at the moment, and he is the tail end Charlie behind Patrick Baumgartner, who is in 19th place. Don't think that's going to make whoa, the start, Whoa, 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 Well, I have to say, I they may your not need to use those runners again today. I wouldn't put my arms out there holding that sled. That sled, you know, TV doesn't do it justice how steep it is right there. Look at the runners. Yeah. You talk about Robin Hood. That, that's why he's in the spin. I mean, he, look at the, he's trying yeah. to check the runners to get controlled. But boy, he really hauled it off that curve. Oh, oh look yeah. at the way the back end is just the, walking around, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that was strange. Didn't no the control of the, of the back of the sled at all. See, that's steep right there. Yes, it is. And slippery. Francesco Friedrich, Johannes Lochner, Brad Hall, the top three. Benny Meyering with a shout of the medals as well. And a great top five run from Hunter Church. 20 sleds down, six to go. All trying to get into the top 20. This is Switzerland's Seaman Friedley with Adrian Fassler, Dominic Schnepfer, and Andreas Haas behind. Former medal winning brakeman, Friedley turned to driving after the last Winter Games and is hoping to take this sled and crew to Beijing. That wasn't a very good start, and it was a worse 
16th best speed. So they got two things running against them right now, Martin. And yeah. He, he needs to keep it straight, make sure he makes the cut. Ooh, Whoa. the skid there. Didn't race the four-man here in January. There was no four-man race in December, so he hasn't raced a four-man on this track in an entire season. And he crashed out in his last four-man race in the World Championships. In so there's Chen, some rebuilding was, to do, isn't there? Yang Cheng, he was 14th just a couple of weeks ago on the Beijing Olympic track, 16th. That should put him in the uh, 20. Yep, he oh. should be in. Rio Shinohara is out. Patrick Baumgartner. Oh, dear. Yeah, the brake men really are not getting the traction they need on the brakes. They all know where they should be braking, and actually, I'm sure they are, but maybe they're just not getting the bite into the ice that they're expecting. And they're having to really panic brake later. The big skids again skid. from these four yeah, man slides. Yeah, and then he gets into the uh, Chrysler a little late. And, you know, it's. It's not the driver who drives the most that wins. It's the driver who drives the least. Again, you, you, that is so steep. That's why you see those guys slip. Yeah. Waiting for the clock to start at the top of the track. The eyes of Mike Evelyn, the brakeman. Chris Spring, the driver, joined by Cody Sorensen and Sam Giger, the former CFL player who's had a season away. Jiguer, I don't think, has raced in a couple of years now. I'll check exactly when his last World Cup start was. But he went back to CFL, and now the Olympics are beckoning once more. The Springer. Yeah, 5.09. What kind of velocity? You have 13th best velocity, so 11th best start, 13th best velocity. Again, two strikes against them. Right we now, a, a good confidence-inspiring day yesterday in the two round, didn't he? So needs this to go started, well for him as well. He started late in the first run, which he didn't have the good ice to work with. In the second run, he went because he started late. He was like 16th or 17th, and he moved up. Yeah, to like a night, 10 to 11. 509 start, so 11th best start, 13th, 14th at the moment. Teammate Justin Cripps is 11. So this is around Yung Jun Wan, Seaman Friedley. Oh, he is ahead of Tricol and Wan by 400 to the second and 400s behind Mihai Tentea. So another very tight battle shaping up there in the midfield. So Chris Spring, 14th at the line. And as you say, John, again, going late in the draw, that's courtesy of the low rankings a couple of seasons ago when he was not in the World Cup. And Sam Giger there dropping in at three. Didn't race last year. I thought he'd had maybe a couple of seasons away. It was only last year that he did not race. Style points, I give him a seven out of 10. When those arms all come up together and come in cohesion, then I'm going to give everybody a 10 there, Martin. But yeah. big hit on the back bunk there. You saw the spray come up. There's Sam. Top of the track now, Cody Baskew with Blaine McConnell, Carlo Valdez and Jimmy Reed. And Jimmy Reed and Carlo Valdez on... Uh, and Josh, uh, rather, Jimmy Reed on the crew with uh, Hunter Church when he took that bronze medal a couple of seasons ago. Cody Sorensen, Rita Varchley, tells me, hasn't slid in uh, for Canada since 2014, is that right? Yeah, 509. Than 11th best start, but 6th uh, yeah. best velocity, good job. That's that new ice house they got in Lake Placid, and that's uh, New York State is built on that Mount Van Overberg complex, and... Uh, so that proved dividends already. A great finish yesterday, fifth place for Cody. Boy, he had a skid there just now, though. 3,000. Well, not bad. Tap the right wall, not the left. That's different. Still hanging there, 13. You know, he's in the back of the pack, doesn't have the ice to work with. 
58, 13th place. Might improve in the second run because we've got better ice to work with. Exactly right. Well, it's a good way to start. And again, the rankings aren't based on what they did last year. They're still based on the last normal season, if you like, the 1920 season. And so that's kind of where Cody was at the end of that year. That's where he starts this season. Dive, look at the old boy. He got out of there really early. That's, uh, you saw the friction coming off the front left, or our left, his right. Yeah. There was a lot of steering there. Got a straight run yeah. down into 10, though, and that kept it, the speed alive, down into the labyrinth. Yeah, Cody Sorensen has not slid in a bobsled since 2014. That is retired. Christoph Harfer next for Germany. Matthias Sommer, Lucas Fritz, and Tobias Schneider. Now, Fritz is not a name I recognize. All three of these guys are new. Oh, he fell. Look out. Look out. Bang. Oh, this is not good. He's going to have all he could do to get this sled at the bottom into the top 20. Oh, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, that looked like disaster. All three of these guys are brand new compared to his four-man team at the Worlds last year in Altenburg. Yeah. Well, Lucas Fritz has made one four-man start in Lake Placid. But it was not with Christoph Harper. It was on the back of Hansi Lochner's sled. Now, these are good lines. He's 19th at the moment. 18. We get down to be safe 17th or so. 16. Right. So he drove himself place. back in. Boy, all we need is those cameras at the start because watch them. We reckon he can get his first reaction. So that means nice. Rio Shinohara is out. Patrick Baumgartner is out. Xiao Yi Jin is out. Roman Heinrich is out. And Lamin Dean watch is this. on the bubble. Watch this. Ooh, there's the slip, but the left foot is power step into the sled, the driver. And he's not a small guy. So yeah. now your athleticism, don't panic. But the guys behind him, look at the, now they got to wait to get in. Now he's got to get that big frame in this little bathtub. Ooh. You know, you make a mistake, but you can make a double mistake and panic. And Martin, we've seen worse than that. Well, Ooh, now, look at that what rock. happens there? We know what happens if a brakeman doesn't get in. What happens if the driver doesn't get in? Look at the back oh, runner there. Yeah. The back yeah. runner was up in the air. Okay, so Christoph Harfer by the skin of his teeth gets into the sled and is in the race. What about Shun Kai Ji of China? Xiao Yi Jun, his teammate, is not in the second heat. Well, their 19th best start, but they're well schooled and they had the 16th best velocity. Anytime you improve your velocity over your start means you Done, done things right, according to the book. Ooh, you see the number three guy's head shake there? That means he's not comfortable in the sled. Yeah. Keep our eyes on that. Maybe we're, I'm... Look at that. You can see too many heads back there. Number two's head is way up. You shouldn't see anybody back there. You've seen that head bob around. It's only the second ever four-man World Cup race for the driver. His debut was in Calgary in February 2019. That was his second ever World Cup race. His first was the two-man the previous day. And then he raced in the World Cup in Lake Placid in December 2019 and did the two-man yesterday. So it's his fifth ever World Cup race, his second ever in a four-man. Steep learning curve, John Morgan. Very, Certainly very is. steep. Look at that. I mean, that was two runners there. Look at the skid he's got. This is up top. This is where I noticed the, uh, look at the head. Look at the number two guy. He was leaning out of the sled. This is down there where it's 75 miles an hour. Again, you shouldn't see any of the helmets behind the driver. I don't think I got to say anything else. And then here, the skid into the, look at the number two yeah. guy. 
well, they're all getting thrown around by the G-forces, and it's still a young and inexperienced crew, relatively, especially on this track. Final sled, Mattia Variola, Eric Fantazzini, Alex Vergina, and Lorenzo Bellotti. All these guys know what they're doing. Now, Patrick Baumgartner, nominally the number one Italian driver. I think this is the season where Mattia Variola really overhauls Baumgartner. He was starting to do it last year, but good the uh, start. standings don't reflect that. Yeah, it is a good getaway. Eighth best start, fourth best velocity. The Italians have been working on their four-man starts in their ice house in Torino. Well, they've got an Olympic Zana. Games to think about, haven't Ooh. they, in eight years or tap. five years' time? Yeah, no, that's very important. Another tap. He had the eighth best start. He slipped to nine. I would say, Lamin Dean, you should be nervous right now because this Italian athlete yep. looks like he's going to get about 14th or 15th or better. Okay. He's 11th. Yeah, 15th or 16th. 17th. There you Lost go. And as in, the as in the two-man race, John, he makes the cut, and Patrick Baumgartner does not. And again, the rubber matting claims yet another victim. He's tied on 17th number with Mr. Wan from Korea. In fact, there's a three-way tie for 17th. Check that out. Yeah. It, so, Mr. Friedel from Switzerland barely makes it in by seven hundredths over Mr. Dean. And look at these numbers, so these lines. This is a mistake here. Very impressed with their eighth start, Martin. Eighth best what? start, fourth best velocity. That tells me there's some big improvement here in the Italian camp. Matteo Variola, the driver, this is his second four-man race driving. The last time he was in a four-man sled here, the first man in the beige jacket there, Simone Batazzo, was the driver, and he was the brakeman. So that's a massive, impressive performance from Mattia Variola. Impressive as well, but perhaps slightly less expectedly from Francesco Friedrich, the winner here, there, and indeed everywhere last year in four-man. Leads after the first heat, after, he will admit, I think, a flawed run. The gaps are not huge. 800s ahead of Hansi Lochner, 1200s ahead of Brad Hall, 1600s ahead of Benny Meyer. Hunter Churching with a shout, 2400s back. He may well be, you know. Oscar's keeper Manis needs to recover something. And what about Ivo de Brown? Great run from him. And Rostislav Kajtukovic behind Maxim Andrianov. Mikhail Vogt completes the top 10. Little surprising maybe to see Justin Cripps back down there. And Christoph Harfer only just got in the sled. Mattia Variolas in the race, as are Yun Jung Won and Seaman Friedley. Watching from the sidelines, Lamin Dean, Roman Heinrich, Xiao Yi Jun, Patrick Baumgartner, Sun Kai Shi, and Ryo Shinohara. You can join them and us for the second heat. We are on at 1500 Central European, 1400 GMT, 0900 Eastern. Till then, from the IBSF TV crew, for John Morgan, I'm Martin Haven saying thank you for joining us. We'll see you for the second and deciding heat.